Hello, everyone. Good Hello. evening, teacher. Hello, Vicente. Hello, Carla. Hi, teacher. How are you? Just Hi, pretty nice. Hey, waiting. Good evening. Hello, hello, Brandy. Good evening. Hello, Ruth. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Hello, Iris. Hello, Fernando. Teacher. Hello, teacher. Hello, there. Hello, <laughs> Cristina. Why not everybody? Did you say everyone? Everybody, <laughs> everyone, everybody is the same. It's the same. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Excellent. Everyone, you, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, did you finish the activities in the platform? Well, I was working, but not yet. Not yet. Oh, wow. But that's a, you should do so, right? <laughs> Where you can see what is your uh, scale or how, what is your work, mm. what all that you did, and if it is okay, if it is not. In the platform, yeah, that's why we have classes over here. And if you have like, if you need some feedback, well, we can go over the activities and see the way you you did it, right? It's quite important, like to 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 be like working in both ways, but using the platform and um, solving some questions over here. Okay, let us wait a little bit. I have eight people and still waiting for. You see, Daniel just is just coming. <laughs> hey, you know. Teacher Kike, good night, good evening. Good evening, Daniel. Welcome. Just arrived to my house. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> look, I look like a robot. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that, that you just came home. That's fantastic to see you in the class again. Hello, no, Fernando. Uh, but I think that it's on time, really. Yeah, actually it's eight o'clock. So Ooh. you are... Congratulations, because you're on time. You you are very disciplined. I can see. Okay, okay. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. Hey, Vicente. Hello. How are you? Bye. Thanks. How's about your day? Well, I was working hard, but anyway. <laughs> oh, me too. Me too. I have. <laughs> A lot, a lot of meeting with my <laughs> colleagues, with my Teacher, I have a problem with my camera. Yeah, I can see that. Oh why God. don't you turn it, why don't you deactivate it for a moment and then you activate it again? I, I think Zoom is, is um, creating some problems. I faced those problems last week. That's why I deactivated my camera. But I hope tonight it will be different. So... Yeah, hey, you know, let me see. Well, actually you had a homework assignment, right? So we're going to start working on that. I really like to start uh, talking a little bit about uh, previous activities so that we can give some time to the people who haven't uh, gotten connected to the class yet. Okay, now, as far as I remember, it was something about your childhood. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, right. okay. so you have been uh, right. re re remembering about your childhood, right? How your childhood was. Okay, and in order to take advantage, we're going to, uh, all the time, we're going to start, okay? And, you know, you can take one minute, two minutes, will be all right, okay? It will be really nice so that we can make some time for the people who... Who, ha who haven't gotten into the class and at the same time to move on to the activities in the platform because, you know, we have a lot of work to do. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, Daniel, choose one person 
A person you would like to know about his or her childhood. Daniel, is Daniel there? Daniel. Hey, hello. Hey, Daniel, choose one person, someone you would like to know about his or her childhood. To, to my 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 childhood or no, my choose somebody, choose somebody okay. in the group. Select okay, a let, victim. Let, let me see. <laughs> Select a victim. <laughs> With my finger. Tu, 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 tu. Gladys. Oh my. Gladys, Hello. okay. Okay, Gladys, you are the lucky one. You, <laughs> Sorry, Gladys. You, you won you, the lottery. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm very nervous. <laughs> okay, we're well, gonna worry. listen. We're gonna listen only to three people. Okay, so that we can start working in something different. Is that right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. I remember that I had a wonderful childhood because uh, I grew up with my parents together. And my mom used to care of us, my three brothers and I, because my dad was the only one who used to work to support us. And I remember that when I started to, to go to kindergarten, my mom used to drop me off and I remember during the first week that um, I used to cry a lot <laughs> every day for an entire week. <laughs> so uh, then the next year the things changed and my dad used to drop me off to to, to the school and in the afternoon after school uh, my my cousin and I used to play um, baseball used to play baseball baseball and every other day we used to play a uh, healthy games uh, like um, peregrina I don't find the I didn't find the translation to English. Fire. Peregrina, <laughs> arranca cebolla, escondelero, and something like that. So my childhood was very uh, wonderful for me. Thank you. <laughs> hey, excellent, pretty good. Nice, that is. Uh, congrats, excellent presentation. You just to play um hide and seek i think everybody used to play hide and seek right so, so that was really nice to know about you excellent so gladys choose the second person please activate your your microphone please i'm uh, sorry Jessica Alejandra Castro. Okay, Jessica. We're gonna know about Jessica tonight. Miss Castro or Mrs. Castro? Uh, yes. Somebody said that you have to activate your camera. Okay. Okay, I changed my mind. Can I choose another one? Yeah, please, go ahead. Okay, Brandy. <laughs> ah, Brady, you are the lucky one. There. I just was helping with somebody say. Yeah, just continue helping the group then. Congrats, Brandy. <laughs> Excellent, Brandy. <laughs> well, my child good evening. really wasn't really good because um, when I was six years old, my mom had uh, twins. So, so my family was my mom, my older sister was me and the twins. So when I was a child, when I was six years old, they came, they born, and my life was really, uh, 
disgusting. <laughs> was bad because my mom every day hit me because I had to take <laughs> my my brothers. <laughs> And they they tell me many times, hey, take care of the baby. It's not going to fail. And they cry and they because it was two and I was six years old. So when they fell, she called me and she hit me when I was doing something else. I was a child. So what can I do? It, it, well, and that's the worst part of this history. When I went to school, uh, was the best time for me because during the breaks or recess, I don't know what is both are the same. It's okay, both break time, break oh, mm -hmm. the free time when I went to the school. We that was the best moment because uh, was like uh, my place for forget everything that happened in my home. I used to play football, soccer, basketball, ping pong, volleyball, and all kind of uh, sport that I could practice before. Um, or sometime before I go home when I I was like uh, running away, you know, escape for go before home. I used to play marbles uh, with my with some friends or family. Uh, marbles and uh, spinny top, you know, if it is okay, spinny top. A spinny top with my cousin friend or my uncle. And sometimes we play, you know, like it. Everybody before <laughs> know that we use like a magic put to rock in the middle of the street or in, or in a place uh, just for have a funny time before I go home or when my mom told me, hey, go and buy tortillas. <laughs> and I said, okay. When I was going in, I, <laughs> I took it like kind of my free time. So <laughs> was okay. And when I was uh, a youth teenager, um, I tried to I tried to forget because my mom betrayed me. She did something that I didn't like it. She saw me with an old man and tried to tell me that I had to do something that I, at the moment I have problem because I can't forget something that happened. So I was frustrating this time. So I practiced uh, box and but first I practice uh, Taekwondo. And this moment is like kind of my free time when I escape and I push him back or, or hit somebody the, 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 during this time. And I really was uh, so good. <laughs> wow, you, 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 you got really prepared for this presentation. Uh, not silly. really. <laughs> No, but you know, you, you share a lot of info. Okay, that was really nice. Thank you very uh, much, Brandy. I was nervous because when you try to say something about you and you didn't have a good time, is uh, sometimes it's frustrating. And I I try to I try to improve it. Sometimes I try to uh, lie about my life because it's not really uh it wasn't funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's, but but you know, sharing your experience help helps you a lot. Believe it. Uh, Brandy, do me the favor to choose the last person, please, and then we will continue with the activities for tonight. Okay, could be Vicente. Okay, Vicente. <laughs> okay, two ladies okay. and and one. Gentleman. Thank you, Brandy. Okay. You're welcome. Come <laughs> Vicente. <laughs> okay, I'm begin. Um, I'm gonna read it because I wrote in my notebook. Um, when I was, I was born in 1967. 
I I grew up in a in a place called uh, Colima. It's on uh, Troncal del Norte Road. It's the same way when you when we are going to Chalatenango or uh, El Poi, La Nueva. Uh, okay. Uh, when I was a child, I used to I used to fish in Lempa River. And also when when I and I was when I was living there, I worked with my father in the in the country. <clears throat> I I studied in Chalatenango, in National Institute. I grad graduate from there. In 1990, I moved to San Salvador and live here. I got married in 1999. And now I, I work here. I have a, a, a son. And I work with the government. I'm in the in the army. And that's it. That's all. <laughs> wow, that, that was really nice. Okay. Okay, thank and, you. And you know, well, that was fantastic to listen to uh, three of you. I know everybody, everybody has um a story to tell, right? And uh, that's quite good, especially when you put into practice a second language, okay? Congrats. Okay, hey. Good. Thank you. So we're going to continue, okay, because we have a lot of work to do, okay? Uh, remember, um, tonight, I mean, this week, you are in charge of working and uh, to continue working in the platform. And you are going to, sorry. Okay, I think this is better. Okay, you are going to um have your midterm, which is an, an activity that's going to be um evaluated. Okay. And you know tonight we're going to uh study this, okay, indirect questions. I I, I know that you that you studied, I mean, that you already saw these activities, right? But we need to go over it so that we can solve some um, some questions that you may have, okay? I don't know, if I ask, for example, a question, um, where, is, where is the bus, where is the bus station? How would you change that question into an indirect question? Where is the bus station? Uh, um, we can say a it, polite uh, indirect question, like, uh, do you know, or could you tell me? Uh, uh, okay, that, that that's perfect, all right. Do you know? Could you tell me? But after that, what is like the pattern we should follow? Excuse me. Go ahead. Do you know? Maybe excuse me. Do yeah, you know all right. Excuse me. Do you know where is the bus station? Okay, that's that's quite. You know, I'm just checking about about the way you did it, and I hope and I. Could and, you tell me what is the bus station? Aha. Uh, uh -huh. So you will notice that there is there is a slight difference between them. Okay, we're going to see, and I will I will start posting the video, okay, especially in those parts because it is you know the, it follows a certain pattern. The order somehow changes when you say where is the bus station? Do you uh, just by chance do you know where the bus station is? So you see. It's kind of, you know, a little, uh, it's kind of difficult at, at the polite. beginning. Yeah, 
And also the pattern changes. Let us take a look at it, please. Hi, everyone. Do you listen to it? Yes. All right, yeah. so yeah, we we'll listen. Class. Let us get concentrated because you know some people think that this part is difficult, but actually it is not difficult. You need just to to we get to the, 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 yeah, the idea and then you start like to practice it and that's it. You'll be able to so ask good. and answer indirect questions about a city or a new place that you might visit. For example, you'll be able to make the following questions. Could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the nearest ATM is? Do you know where the restrooms are? Can you tell me how often the buses run? Do you know where I can catch the bus? No. Before I begin to explain the grammar involved, what I would like to do is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. And so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to listen to a conversation. And we're going to listen to different questions that are asked about a city. Your task is to listen carefully, and I will ask you questions at the end of the audio program. Okay, remember that we need to focus our minds in the questions, okay? Because it is, uh, you know, there are different ways to ask questions, indirect and direct uh, questions. Mm -hmm. Teacher, tell me, Daniel. Uh, let me try to change to my cell phone to some laptop because this is the small. All right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, thank you. Let me try. Okay, meanwhile, he solves. Uh, his problem, Daniel saw his problem. We will continue, okay? And. Okay. Excuse me, could you tell me where the nearest ATM is? There's one upstairs across from the duty free shop. Great. And do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Sure. Just follow the signs for transportation. Okay. And can you tell me how often they run? They run every 20 minutes or Excuse me, it's me again. I'm sorry. I need some more information if you don't mind. Do you know how much the bus costs? It's $20. You can buy a ticket on the bus. $20? Wow. Well, a taxi costs about $50. Hmm. Okay. And do you know where a bookstore is? I'd like to get a guidebook. Go upstairs and turn right. You'll see one on your left. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. You too. Let me present some structure at this time. What we want to do in this class is we want to learn how to change direct questions into indirect questions. And the reason that we want to do this is because it's a lot more polite to use indirect questions. So for example, if I say, where's the bank? It's less polite than if I say, could you tell me where the bank is? And what we're going to learn is we're going to learn some rules that we're going to follow in changing these questions from direct to indirect questions. We're going to learn how to do it with the verb to be, and we're also going to learn how to change WH questions with either do or did. Let's try to make sense of this whole concept here. What we want to do is we want to be able to turn direct questions into indirect questions. And let me propose a formula on how to do this, if you will. So we want to turn the question, where is the bank, into an indirect question and the way that we'll do that is we will use some kind of polite model verb. So in this case, could you tell me? All right. And then this is going to be followed by a WH word. In this case, it happens to be where, but it could be any other WH word. For example, it could be what time, how often, when, etc. Any kind of WH word. 
is what we're going to include here. So could you tell me, and in this case I will ask where, this is going to be followed by the subject. So in this case it happens to be the bank, where the bank, no. and then finally we're, we're going to include the verb. So in this case, could you tell me where the bank is? And just so that we follow the pattern that I'm proposing here, I'm going to go ahead and play with the colors for now. Hey, this is this is something quite important. That's why I will post a video, okay? And as you can notice over here, uh, could you tell, uh, I mean, this is the question, right? The one that the guy is presenting, right? It's actually this question, right? Where's the bank? Where is the bank? Okay, and after that, we have, uh, uh, we introduced the, the indirect question, okay? By using, uh, could you tell me? And then a double H word and then the subject and then the right. verb. Now, as you can see, is if I, if we create, for example, a just no question, this is this is what I want you to notice. Let me see. Can you give me one second, please? Uh, yeah, over here. Now, if we want to create a just no question, we will say is the bank near here? That is a yes, no question. Yes or no? Yes. yes or no. Uh -huh. Is the bank near yeah. here? No, that is a yes, no question. You say yes. Or uh, not. Is there a bank? Is there? Oh, sorry. Is there? Is there, is there a bank near here? Yes, there is or no, there isn't. Simple like that, right? So this is a yes, no mm -hmm. question, okay? Now, if we, if you want to affirm, give me one second, we'll try with another one. If you want to affirm, then you say the bank is near here. Yes or no, a positive statement. Is, is that a positive statement? Yes. Yeah, yes. okay. So as you can see, yeah. uh, my goodness. Is there an, and the, uh, my goodness. Probably. All right, is there a bank near here or the bank is near here? So what, what I want you to notice is this, okay? In a direct question, you have it like, like, like this way. Is the bank near here? Like the, the, the order is like, um, as a, like, like a question, right? Like a normal question. But when you get an indirect question, then, the position changes as if you were affirming mm -hmm. the bank is near here. You don't say where is the bank, but you say where the bank is. So it is different as you can see over here in the other examples, where are the restrooms? Do you know where the restrooms are? The verb at the end. Yeah. And look at the next one. With do, how often do the buses leave? Can you tell me how often the buses leave? Look at the next one. What time does the bank open? And over here, since, uh, since we are using simple present, you need to notice about the verb that is in the third person. Because we are okay. talking about a bank. Do you know what time the bank opens? Opens, not open. Do you know what time uh, uh, the bank opens? Now you know the verb changes into the third person because we're talking about a bank. And mm -hmm. we did, now simple pass. We did, uh, when did fly 566 arrive? Do you know when fly? Uh, 566 uh, arrived as if you were affirming people. That is, 
Yeah, that's why, that's why I, I want you to be clear about it. Ok, solo se lo voy a decir un, así, a grosso modo en español. Si ustedes se fijan, este, los verbos, el verbo to be en este caso, está en, en orden de pregunta, ¿verdad? Porque es una pregunta, es una, es una pregunta, pero es una pregunta directa. Cuando lo pasamos a una pregunta indirecta, ustedes se van a dar cuenta que el orden cambia. El verbo ya se va como que si estuviéramos afirmando algo. Miren, miren este, where are the restrooms? Do you know where the restrooms are? Y miren con, 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 en, en este no cambia, how often do the bus, bien, este sí cambia. How often do the buses leave? ¿Por qué acá el verbo no cambia? Leave, leave. ¿Quién me dice eso? Porque bases es plural. Excellent. That's the answer I wanted to, to listen to. Exacto, porque es plural. Y, y si ustedes se fijan acá en el banco, es singular. Ok. Y es tercera persona. Y aquí sí cambia como si estuviésemos afirmando. Miren. All right. And take a look at the, at the last one. Como tenemos pasado simple, miren el verbo. En pasado. Como si estuviésemos afirmando. Ok, so that's everything related to direct and indirect uh, uh, questions. I, I don't know if there is any question about it. Is there any no, no question? No, no, no. So no. we're, we're going to try to, well. The question is that if the question is in past, so the verb, the main verb, automatically pass to pass to. Yeah, over here, as you know, uh, when we have auxiliary this, you know that this is a, this is a direct, a direct uh, question, right? That's why we have did. But when we have indirect questions, you know, we don't have did, but we have the verb in the past, past. form. Past. All right. Now, yes. Now, we're going to try. We're going to try. You know, we have a lot of things to do. Give me one second. Well, that's actually what, what, the, what the video will, will present, okay? And we are going to practice, okay? Okay. <clears throat> this is the one. Based on the listening, okay? Based on the listening uh, from the video, the one that we just saw answer the following question. Could you tell me where the nearest ATM is? This is this is like the question we heard, right? So what would be the best the best answer to that question? One, the, the first, the second, or the third one? The first one. The first, the first one. one. It's upstairs across from the duty free shop. Based on the listening activity on the video, answer the questions with how often. How often do the buses run? What's the best option? First, second, or third? The number two. The it second, is the second one. one. Second. They run every 20 minutes. Okay. Number second. three. Based on the listening activity from the video, answer the following question. What other information that Eric asked for? The third one. The cost of the bus to the city. Bless you. Number four. How would you transform the following sentence into an indirect question? Where's the internet cafe? The first one. First one. First one. Where's the nearest internet cafe? Could you tell me where the nearest internet cafe is? Pretty good. And number five, rephrase the following question as indirect question. How late do the buses run? The third, the third one. The first one. The first? Yeah. The first one. Ah, the third one. All right, and that's it. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Pretty good. Pretty good, you did it. 
Okay. Now you will see. I have a question. Tell me. Ask the question, please. I'm asking you. Okay. When we finish the when we check and everything is okay, that's mean that we finish this part because we have to work in the platform every day. No, I mean uh when we go to the to the activity so yeah that's right i got your i got your question uh brandy yes that's right you know uh, in the in the platform we see a video or some explanation and then we we discuss the information in the class or and then you go in and go to the to the knowledge check and this is to 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 just for us to notice if we got the the whole idea about the topic okay we don't have to do nothing else no 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 i mean uh remember that, that i i try to assign as many as many homework assignments as possible right no i mean because uh, some uh somebody in the group say that we have to work in this platform but i uh, i don't know if we check this and we have an extra uh, something to do in this platform because I tell you that I don't know. If... No, actually no. Uh, only the activities that the, that the, that the platform uh, presents. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, you know, the time is running and what are the activities that we are facing this week, people? Two. Two, uh -huh. we have we have two activities which are them two for a week we we need to go over the third section which is the one that we are going to start tonight and also what else do you have for this week i don't know Le lesson three and four no Lesson three and three and midterm. midterm. Ah, you have the midterm, right? So, you know, this this week is quite important because you know uh, you have that uh, important activity. All of the activities are important, right? But when we get into a midterm or to a, a final exam, you know, that's quite quite important. Now, over here, we're gonna talk a little about adjective and nouns, okay? By the end of this session, you will be able to express your opinions about houses and apartments. Additionally, you will be able to describe your house or apartment in English and use evaluate, evaluating phrases such as apartments are too small for pets, houses are too expensive, expensive, sorry, or houses cost too much money. But you know, as as I usually do, I have um, a homework, but we're gonna go over this, this part first, okay? Now pay attention, hey, don't forget that every single topic we study over here, it is not like, hey, we already finished answer a question, so we are done, it's over. No, you need to continue uh, putting into practice the info. Now, um, we're going to see evaluations with adjectives and nouns. You know, hi everyone. By the end of this class, you will be able to give your opinion about houses and apartments. Additionally, you will be able to evaluate your own house and apartment. For example, you'll be able to make the following statements Apartments are too small for pets but houses are too expensive. Houses cost too much money. Before I talk about the grammar involved in this particular class, what I would like to do now is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. We will listen to a few people talk about their opinions on houses and apartments. Your task is to listen carefully and answer a couple of questions that I'll have for you at the end of the audio program. Apartments are too small for pets. 
Apartments aren't big enough for families. Apartments don't have enough parking spaces. Apartments have just as many expenses as houses. Apartments don't have as many rooms as houses. Houses aren't as safe as apartments. Houses aren't as convenient as apartments. Houses cost too much money. Houses don't have enough closet space. Houses don't have as much privacy as apartments. Let me present some structure now. The first thing that I would like to do is to show you how to make evaluations using adjectives. And particularly, we're going to learn how to use the words enough and Okay, what is the pronunciation of this word? Enough. 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 So, sounds like the end an, sound like, a, like an F. Like an F. All right. Enough. They will say laugh. Enough. Laugh. Enough. 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 Okay. Enough. Keep it in mind because there's some, some students tend to have problems with this. But it's actually a, an F sound. Two. After that, we're going to make evaluations, but this time we're going to use nouns. And at the same time, we're also going to use the words enough and also to. Enough. First of all, what are adjectives? Okay. Well, adjectives are those words that describe nouns. So... What, are, what, what are adjectives, people? Who describe nouns, say? words that describe nouns all right so, so they describe people places or things since we're talking about evaluating right. houses and apartments what we want to do is we want to think about some of those adjectives that we might use to evaluate a house or an apartment and so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to write a lot of those words here and then what i would like for you to do is to uh, memorize this and uh, maybe study them if you're not familiar with them. So for example, we have the adjectives comfortable, convenient, dangerous, dark, bright, expensive, huge, small, inconvenient, modern, noisy, private, quiet, safe, small, small. Ashes. And I'm pretty sure. All right. Can, can somebody read this word? Comfortable. 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 Convenient. Convenient. Very good. The next one. Dangerous. 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 Good. Gorgeous. Dark. 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 Bright. 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 Huge. 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 Small. Small. Inconvenient. No, no. Incom give me one second. Read this, please. Small. Only one person. Small. Only one. Small. 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 Inconvenient. Convenient. Inconvenient. 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 Modern. 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 Yeah. Modern. Noisy. 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 Private. Noisy. Private. 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 Quiet. Quiet. Safe. Safe. Small. Again, small. Small. Yeah, small. Small. Spacious. 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 All right. So. Uh, I hope you 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 know all the all, I mean the meaning of every single word over here, right? Pronunciation and meaning, quite important. Okay, now try to memorize as many words uh, as possible daily, people. All right, that will What's enrich. The, the first one, I forget what the meaning of the first comfortable. One. We're gonna listen a second time. You will see a lot of those words here, and then. 
what I would like for you to do is to uh, memorize this and uh, maybe study them if you're not familiar with them. So, for example, we have the adjectives comfortable. Uh -huh. What do you listen to? Comfortable. Uh, I say exactly. comfortable. Yeah, comfortable. This is a different word for the pronunciation. Difficult? Teacher. No, it is not. It is not. Listen once yeah, again. Maybe study them I say it's comfortable. So, for example, we have the adjectives comfortable. Uh, what do you listen to? Comfortable. 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 Yeah, that's the way it is. Comfortable. 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 Yeah. Comfortable. Now, listen to the second. A, memorize pronunciation and also meaning. Convenient. Convenient. Dangerous. Dangerous. Convenient. Dark. Bright. Bright. Expensive. Expensive. Huge. Huge. Small. Small. Inconvenient. Inconvenient. Modern. Modern. Noisy. Modern. Noisy. Private. Private. Quiet. Quiet. Safe. Safe. Small. Small. Spacious. Spacious. And I'm pretty Spacious. sure you can think of. Okay, now. Affordable. Many more. Let's continue. Let's continue, please. Affordable. Let me present some structure at this time on how to make sense of this evaluation that you see there towards the left apartments aren't big enough for families so in order for us to make that particular evaluation we can think of the following structure so let me go ahead and write that now following this structure we can see that we're gonna have a subject so in this case we have apartments this is followed by verb to be in this case it happens to be in its negative form Okay. And then, and then this is going to be followed by the adjective. So in this case, the adjective is big. Then this is going to be followed by enough. And then um, we're going to have some sort of complement here. So in this case, it happens to be families, right? So if we look at the pattern, we have a subject. I'm going to go ahead and no. follow the colors so that we can see what's happening there. That's in black. There we go. So we can see that the subject is apartments. Then this is followed by the verb to be. In this case, it happens to be the verb to be in its negative form. After that, we're going to have some sort of adjective. And then it's going to follow the word enough. And then we're going to include um, some sort of complement, if you will. So if we think about other evaluations that we can say about apartments, either apartments or homes, then we can say the following. I'm going to go ahead and copy this because this evaluation is going to be quite similar. So we can say the following. Apartments aren't, and so I'm going to change the adjective here. So I'm going to say aren't spacious enough for families. Okay. And let's do one more. Uh, we can also say that apartments aren't, and I'm going to change the adjective now. I'm going to say apartments aren't comfortable enough for families. The next thing that I would like to do is to make sense of that second evaluation that you see there at the bottom. Now using the word to. And so what I want you to notice is the following. That we're just going to have different ways of evaluating things. And so there isn't just one way to do it. There are many different ways. So in this case, we're going to use this expression. And I want you to notice what's going to change. So I want you to think about what is the opposite of big. Well, the opposite of big, we can we can think of that as being small, right? So in this case, I want you to notice what, what's going to change. So in this case, I'm going to say apartments are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to include two small. So the only thing that changes is that I'm no longer using the bird to be in its negative form, but now I'm using it in its positive form. And then I'm including two plus the adjective small, and I'm saying for families. So what I want you to notice is that these two sentences, these two evaluations are the same thing. The only thing is that I'm expressing them in different ways. All right, so I really, it really caught my attention about what the guy is uh, referring to these two sentences. And actually they are saying the same. The message is the same, okay? If you, if you say this in Spanish, 
So you will notice that it is uh, actually the same meaning, okay, uh, in the second one. Los apartamentos no son lo suficientemente grandes para las familias. Miren cuando ocupamos tú. Los apartamentos son demasiado pequeños para las familias. Eh, estamos diciendo lo mismo. Ok, solo estamos usando una estructura diferente. Too small, big enough. All right. You notice is that this two sense, a couple of things will change. And so let me present the formula at this time, and I'm going to show you what kind of things will change. Well, first of all, um, similar to making evaluations with adjectives, we're going to have a subject. So in this case, we're going to say apartments. Okay, That's going to follow a verb. In this case, it's no longer the verb to be. So that's the first thing that changes. We're no longer using the verb to be. So in this case, we're using any other kind of verb. In this case, it happens to be that that's on a negative. So we, we're going to say don't have. That's uh, The verb is on its negative form. And then this follows enough. So opposite from adjectives where we would include the adjective first, when we make evaluations using nouns, we no longer use the adjective first. We're going to include enough, and then we're going to include the noun. So let me give an example here. Don't have enough. And then uh, whatever um, noun that we want to include. So in this case, don't have enough parking spaces. Okay, uh, so the noun is parking spaces and then you can think of a complement if you will. So you can include something else there. So for example, uh, what could that be? Don't have enough parking spaces for people, right? That could be the complement. But in this case, the noun is parking spaces. And quickly, I want to talk about nouns. So what are nouns? What are some of the nouns that we can think about when we are um, you know, thinking about making evaluations of apartments and houses. Well, uh, we can think of things like parking spaces, as you can see there. We can think of things like closet space, right? We can think of things like privacy. And of course, we can think of things like money, if you will, right? So these kind of things are nouns that we can think of. So we can say the following. Apartments don't have enough parking spaces. Apartments don't have enough closet space. Apartments don't have enough privacy. And the last example that I would like to make is how to use to. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, this I'm going to take that example there. Houses, this follows the verse, so that continues to be the same. We are no longer going to include the word enough. So in this case, we're going to use too much money, right? Houses cost too much money. So if we can think of this, I'm going to follow the pattern there. Houses cost, that follows the verb. And then in this case, I want you to notice what happened. So we include too much money. The last thing that I would like for you to do now is to evaluate your house or apartment. It depends on where you live, right? And I want you to evaluate your house or apartment using adjectives, such as the ones that are here, and of course following the formula that I presented to you earlier today. And I also want you to evaluate your house or apartment using nouns. So uh, once again, using the formula that I'm presenting to you today. And then of course, you're going to follow this formula. So I want you to make as many examples as you possibly can. The idea is to practice as much as possible. All right. So listen, I will stop sharing because um, I need to. I need to check the to, to check the list of things. You're gonna help me with that, and at the end, I will let you know what we are doing. Okay, what we are doing just to put into practice what we have learned tonight. Okay, let me see. <clears throat> Give me one second, please.
All right. Ana Ivania. Present teacher. Ana Yancy. Ana Yancy. Ángel Alejandro. Present teacher. Brandy. I'm here. Cecilia. Present. Cristina. Cristina Yamilet. Daniel Alejandro. Daniel. I saw Daniel over here. What happened? Sure. Okay, here. Daniel. Okay. Uh, Diana Stephanie. Present. Elena Noemi. Present teacher. Evelyn Susana. Present teacher. Fernando Alberto. I'm here, teacher. Gladys Mavi. Present. Iris Concepción. Iris. Present. Ok. Present. Ok, Iris. Jessica Alejandra. Present teacher. ¿Qué? Carla Selena. Present teacher. Kevin Alexander. Kevin Alexander. Kevin. María del Carmen. María del Carmen Cepeda. Oscar Alejandro. Oscar Alejandro Pacheco. He's not here. He's not over here. Rafael Cruz. I'm here, teacher. Rafael Ernesto. Present, teacher. Ruth Elizabeth. Present. Sandra Noemí. Sandra it's Noemi. Not... Sandra Noemi. No, it's not here. It's not here. Uh, Vicente Israel. Here, teacher. And Janira Elizabeth. I'm here. All right. So, hey, how do you feel? Uh, teacher, a uh, classmate Grice in the chat. Who? Who? Uh, Cristina del Carmen. Right. Uh, let me see. That's Cristina. Oh, so has give a me problem one second. With your mic. I don't know. Yeah, Cristina del no, Carmen. No, Janira. Ah, yeah. Janira has a problem. And also Cristina, Cristina Carmen, right? Calderón. Me Martins. also, teacher. Cristina. Yeah. Yeah, Cristina and let me see who's the other person. Cristina and Ruth, right? Cristina. I have a problem with my camera. Oh, all right. And I can see also Janira. Let me see. Yeah, Jessica, Janira, Cristina. Give me one second. Give me one second, cause Hannah Yancy, no, she's not over here, right? Cristina del Carmen. Cristina del Carmen is Christina over here. Cristina del Carmen said that she is in the uh, social security. All right, Kevin Alexander. Maria del Carmen Cepeda, Oscar Alejandro Pacheco, and Sandra, yeah. Oscar Pacheco. Yeah, here, it was a problem. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah, good. Was now, that, now, yes. All right, it's people, problem. listen. I think I could, I could uh, solve the problem. Hey, you know what? Uh, for this week, since we're going to continue talking about houses and apartments and two and enough and um, you know what we have studied so far uh, get ready with a presentation about the queer this houses were quite okay se lo, se lo voy a decir en español van a hacer una pequeña presentación de van a buscar una casa la, de las casas más extrañas que hay en el mundo Hay unas casas que las han construido al revés. Creo que ya las han visto en Europa. Hay otras casas que oh, las yeah. han construido en forma de zapato. He visto una casa en forma de perrito. O sea, hay casas hay de muchos de estilos. Ah. De voz. <ríe> Esa sí no la he visto. Pero yeah, yeah. le van a agregar, por supuesto, lo que hemos visto este día. Two 
and enough. To and enough. Ok. Así que pues tienen esa, esa presentación. Ok. Y si no quieren hacer eso, pues describanos su casa. Descríbanos su casa y uh, pueden elegir entre, entre, la, entre la primera opción o la segunda. Ahí ustedes, lo que a ustedes les parece. We only have to choose one house. Yeah, only one. Ok. Eligen o oh, the weirdest houses in the, in the world or my house. Ok. Pero le incluyen to, enough, enough. Y, y los adjetivos que, que, que aprendimos ahora. Comfortable. Okay. ¿Cuáles eran? Comfortable. Dark, dark, bright, convenient, convenient, Entonces le van a combinar esas dos cosas. De acuerdo. Vamos okay. a tratar, vamos a tratar okay. de que si mañana no, partic no participan todos, pero poco a poco vamos a ir haciendo que todos participen. Porque yo les quiero escuchar a todos. O maybe we can. We can have two okay. minutes for people and you, we can have a, you know, the time just for check. Because I think in my case, I want to talk as much as possible. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, eh, si eso sería bueno que pues que invirtiéramos dos minutitos, ok? Dos minutitos y ya luego alguien más toma la palabra. Pero acuérdense, si ustedes son que 20 personitas y do, dos minutos por persona, pues ahí se nos va la clase, ¿verdad? Entonces, yo considero que es mejor que si ahora no participé, pues que la próxima yo me proponga a, a participar sí o sí. ¿Verdad? Okay. You, you okay. must to extend the time, teacher. One hour is enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. It, it is not enough. Hey, it's been a pleasure. No, I think okay. we need one hour extra. An extra well, hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we I, have yeah, to I open the others. So we uh, have to continue. Okay, pidamos la de once a medianoche, entonces. Hey, bendiciones. It's been a pleasure. Okay, once thank again. you very much. Good night. See you Bye. tomorrow. Thank you prepárense, you prepárense. See you. Okay. Okay. See you. See you. Good night. Night. Goodbye. Bye, teacher. Goodbye, goodbye. Good night.